.NET 8 is finally here, and it's a long-anticipated release by the whole .NET community, including myself, and I'm most happy for all the .NET developers out there limited to using long-term supported releases. With .NET 8 and C Sharp 12, we get so many new features and improvements to the platform we all use and love. Now, let's take a step back and get an overview of what changes are new in .NET 8. I will mostly focus on what's important for everyday .NET developers like you and myself. There are also areas of .NET that I am currently not using and therefore will skip in this short overview video. Let's start with something almost every developer will benefit from using in .NET 8. Frozen collections introduce immutable collections optimized for read operations. Once created, you cannot change the content of the collection. The frozen dictionary and frozen set types are a bit more expensive to create, but once created, they allow for much quicker read access. In scenarios where you populate a collection once and use it in a long-running service, such as a singleton in an ASP.NET Core Web API project, it will provide much better performance. Speaking of performance, the performance improvements we get with .NET 8 are astonishing. It seems like we get more and more improvements when it comes to performance between one version to another. It seems like after so many quick iterations from one .NET version to another, performance improvements should slow down. However, the opposite is true. We get more and more performance improvements from one version to another. Stephen Taub's legendary blog post about this year's performance improvements has again exceeded the limits of the previous version we got for .NET 7. The benchmarks shown in today's session at the .NET Conf 2023 show performance improvements of 18 to 24 percent when it comes to ASP.NET Core requests per second. Blazor has massively evolved from .NET 7 to .NET 8. We got a new Blazor web app project template for Visual Studio that I already demonstrated in a dedicated video a few weeks ago. In today's Blazor session, Microsoft engineers talked about a 20% faster UI rendering from .NET 7 to .NET 8. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it also won't hurt. Static server rendering makes Blazor a viable option for many more scenarios, not just building single-page applications or spas. It allows us to build web applications that do not need a single R connection or download WebAssembly, making them load very quickly. Last but not least, stream rendering allows us to stream data to the website as it becomes available. Meanwhile, a placeholder will be shown to the user, making it an overall better user experience without any additional HTTP requests. I will also record and upload a dedicated Blazor video where I show hands-on all the new features that come with .NET 8 in Blazor. It will be out in a few days on this channel. Ahead of time compilation is a .NET feature that can have a significant impact on the overall performance of your .NET applications. It compiles the code ahead of time into machine code instead of intermediate language or IL code. The idea is to get rid of the just-in-time or JIT compiler. Basically, we're shifting part of the work from the client machine to compile time. AOT apps contain the application code and a .NET runtime with a single executable file. The three most important benefits of AOT compiled apps are a reduced memory footprint, improved startup time and improved battery life. With .NET 8, a sample app from the .NET Conf presentation had the initial app size of 100 MB reduced to 25 MB using AOT. The minimal app size using AOT is just below 10 MB according to today's session. I will also record a dedicated video about AOT in .NET 8 within the next few days. I will show you how to build those AOT apps and everything you need to know about them. Also, I will happily check if the 10 megabytes call from Microsoft is actually true. Let's find out. Consider subscribing to the channel so you won't miss out on this video. 
Primary constructors are probably the headliners of this year's C Sharp 12 version. Collection expressions will also be a feature that we will see shortly in most code bases. I already recorded and uploaded a video where I show and explain primary constructors in great detail. If you want to learn more about it, make sure to check it out. Collection expressions allow for a more compact syntax to define collections. I will show a few examples in this video, but you best try it out yourself. It feels a lot like defining arrays in JavaScript or TypeScript. We also get the spread operator that allows us to conveniently add items from one collection to another. I don't plan to dive deeper into collection expressions on this channel. However, if you think this topic would be interesting, please let me know in the comments and I will record a dedicated video about it. A completely new stack to build cloud-native.NET applications has been announced at the .NET Conf 2023 keynote. .NET Aspire comes with orchestration, an admin panel and much more. I've yet to dive into it and to understand its full capabilities. However, since I know David Fowler has been working on it, it must be a great tool. What we saw from today's session is that we can add it to existing projects or create new projects using .NET Aspire. It will help glue all our services together to make them work together seamlessly. For example, configuring connection strings and URLs can be hard to do manually. .NET Aspire is a new option to help us solve this issue. .NET Aspire comes with a dashboard that lets us trace all HTTP requests and shows us all errors and details. It allows us to gain many insights into our cloud-native applications. It's definitely worth checking out .NET Aspire, especially if you plan on building .NET cloud-native applications. I haven't had the time yet, but I'll sure I'll do it in the future. I have been using .NET 8 in the preview and release candidate versions for a few months now, yet I'm happy to finally see its official release and what we all will build using it in the future. The performance improvements are nice to have. I personally don't work in an environment where I absolutely need every last millisecond of performance improvement. However, getting free performance improvements just by upgrading from .NET 7 to .NET 8 I'm happily taking it. And also, it will help reduce cost for all applications hosted in the cloud, because you will use less memory and less CPU when upgrading from .NET 7 to .NET 8. For me, the new static server rendering opportunities Blazor introduces with .NET 8 open up so many new scenarios to use Blazor for implementing web applications beyond single-page applications. Also, the pair-component interactivity open up so many new opportunities. I'm gladly explore Blazor more in the future. I'm sure Blazor can now be used in many more scenarios and in many more and broader use cases. As stated before, I will also create a video about Blazor and what's new with .NET 8, where I go more hands-on and show code. And I will also record a second video about AOT in .NET 8. Stay tuned for more. If you want to learn more, even about things I haven't covered in this short overview video, please go down to the video description where I have links to today's sessions at the .NET Conf Day 1, as well as the official blog post announcing .NET 8 on the .NET blog. Thanks for watching, let's enjoy .NET 8 and I will see you in the next video.